right through the water and up the woods to grandmother's house we go so definitely not as much attack power on this sword so definitely more defensive type of setup I have here uh, I mean the bow and arrow as we saw practically killed those things in one hit so that definitely had the damage to it I'm kind of interested to see how this will play out because I want to know what kind of magics I can get if I can mix things around can I use this sword and shield with different magics things like that I mean that was always a big thing about the Elder Scrolls games was being able to be this customizable character that you wanted to be and it's kind of I think they're trying to do that with the skill system with the way they're doing these trees especially with the fact that weapons and armor and your class all have different specific abilities I mean you can get weapons or, or abilities for your weapon abilities for your class and that's kind of neat I have no idea which of these I'm gonna want to be honestly I've got a skill point to spend I mean the game hasn't really told me that but I figured it out you know <laughs> lo and behold uh, I can get let's see fiery grip instant one enemy, 18 meters, 60 magicka. Pull enemies towards you and deal fire damage. Ooh, I kind of like that. Kind of reminds me of a uh, Death Knight tank kind of thing. Spiked armor increases armor by 50, returns three physical damage to melee attackers. So that's kind of nice, especially since I'm using sword and board. I don't have a lot of power behind my attacks right now. That would help them die. Stone fist, instant enemy, 10 meters, deals 16 physical damage and knocks down an enemy for three seconds. Hmm. Uh, I don't know you. Go away. So, do I have, I have one skill point, Sky Shards. Sky Shards can be found throughout the world. Collecting three Sky Shards grants an extra skill point. Alright, do I have anything for my weapon? Wow, I have two points in bow. Three points in one hand shield. Okay. Oh, I'm level 1. Or is that level 1? I have no points. Unlock dual wield at rank 2. I have poison arrow. 12 poison damage to an enemy. Target takes an additional 5 poison damage over 10. <laughs> okay, so arrows get like poison stuff. Alright, um... What's my one hand and shield getting? Puncture. 16 physical damage reduces target's armor by 40% for 12 seconds. Taunts the target as well. So I have to buy it or buy into it. Hmm. Well, let's let's buy puncture. Ability you purchase has been loaded into your ability tray. Press one to use the ability. Some abilities require a valid target. Okay. I'm gonna have to change this around a bit. I've got mouse buttons. I want to readjust here. Uh, actually, speaking of which, let's see. Can I do that? Can I set my key bindings? Yes, I can. All right. Um, let's say ability one. Sweet. Ability two. Uh, middle mouse is mouse free look. I really don't care too much about mouse free look, I don't think. But let's cancel for now. Where's mouse free look? Hold on. Alt is the primary bind for character windows. Hold on, cancel. That's what Alt does?
Oh, yeah, I don't want to change that, I don't think. Anyway. I need a target for this one. What else do I have? Skills. Is that K? That's K. Okay, I have Puncture. And I can get something for my class. The question is, is which one do I get? Oh, I can't get one. I haven't leveled my class yet. I see. Right then, well I have Puncture. Let's go and try it. I got a notification that I received my first notification. I don't know how to take that. Puncture! Take that! I lowered your armor down to zero because you're dead! Ha! Hello. Empty. Lame. Earn. Empty. Get past that. Nice job. Nice job, Laris. Nice. <laughs> Come on, girl! Hmm, interesting. Uh, what's around this way? An empty trunk. An empty urn. At least it lets me know it's empty, right? Oh, chest. Oh, a mace. New weapon time. Is that a two-handed? No, it's a one-handed. Okay, so it's still from my sword and board. Same damage, same level, same value. So there's like no difference? Let's equip it and find out. Alright, what's over here? Puncture! I wish to stab things in their face. I found the perfect skill set to do that with. Swing. Swing. Bada bada bada. Swing. Alright, so this is, uh, is going to be a fairly lengthy tutorial section. I can feel it. Stab! In the face! I want to see what's over here. I like to explore. I can't help it. Hi. I see red circles. Not standing in the circles. Ooh, he's dual wielding with the mace. Hello. So if I explore... Can I possibly find loot if I keep exploring? I don't know. Everything is empty. Is it empty because other people are searching, or is it empty because it's empty? Like, legitimately, is this empty because it was meant to be empty, or is it empty because another player got to it first? I don't... I don't know. I think it's because it's meant to be empty. Hold on. I can't help it. I want to explore. What's up here? Empty. 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 Chest! Oh, a staff! I'm going to get every weapon type. <laughs> All right, so block with the staff, push with the staff. This is my epic Herodric staff, and I wield it like a fairy. 
No, I'm sorry. Fairies know how to handle their staves. They've had lots of practice. Holding it down. Oh! Ah! Hello! <laughs> Increase to two. That's right, baby. Wait, where am I even going? Do do I even MMO? Yeah, see? There's always exceptions somewhere. That's why I always explore. Even though I'm going to be spending like two hours in this damn starting section. Swear to God. Uh, empty, empty, empty chest. Another mace. Lightning staff is kind of interesting. I like the fact that the lightning staff... I like the fact that the lightning staff uh, has that charge up ability where you can just kind of zap them. Like you have the single shot thing here and then you've got the charge up ball which is kind of nice. <laughs> you know, uh, Lyris, I just wanted to tell you, if you like being stabbed that much, I could have helped you with that. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that brought a tear to my eye. Uh, mm. I'm juvenile that way, what can I say? Very juvenile that way. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, ah! Where am I even going? Oh man. Oh man, if that's true, that sucks. So, so other players can take the loot around you? And you have to wait for it to respawn? Oh, they really should share it, you know? Like, if a chest has loot in it, you should be able to legitimately pick up that loot individually. That is, um... That's a terrible idea, in my opinion. If that is true. I think I think I heard Force say something about that, too, where, um... There's two, there's like a couple major things wrong with the questing in this game. If you're in a party, I believe, uh, it doesn't... Oh, you're an ugly guy, aren't you? So I've heard that if you're in a party, it doesn't count the objectives of your quest as shared. So something that WoW's been doing for forever, something that Final Fantasy does, something that every MMO at this point of the game does, it doesn't do. Which is honestly terrible. Very terrible. Now... Can they fix that? Yes. That's probably not... Well, I can't say that's not a difficult fix because that's probably going to require a lot of back-end coding that they probably didn't put in the game yet, which they should have done in the first place. Meh. Anyway. That's terrible. Uh, I really hate to hear that. Alright. Right. Do I have... Um, Destructive touch. Magic to the enemy. F fire touch causes knockback. Frost causes deep freeze. Shock causes disorient. Okay. So destructive staves can change what... Th that's kind of cool. <coughs> that's kind of cool there. I like the fact that the destructive staff itself has a skill set, but the destructive staff's skill set is still based upon what kind of staff you have. So I have a lightning staff right now. When I get Destructive Tusk, it's going to do something completely different than if I find a Frost Staff or a Fire Staff. So, that's cool. 
I like that, that I can get this one ability and it will do different things based on what weapon I'm holding at the time. That's pretty nice. So, Wall of Elements, an elemental wall that deals damage every second in the area. Of course, that'll let's see here. Flame, Frost, and Shock Damage. So that does every element on it. I don't know, it looks like that only that one ability is going to do that something different than... Concussion, Shield, Burning based upon elements. So there is Impulse, which does have uh, a difference, but the others appear to be kind of bland. Hmm. Alright. Find the Prophet. Prophet? Gonna make lots of profit. Alright. The good news is we made it here in one piece and the Prophet looks unharmed. Now the bad news. It's going to be up to you to keep him safe and get him back to Tamriel. I'm not going with you. What do you mean? Where are you going? We haven't intertwined our fates yet. I probably should have mentioned this before, but it never seemed like the right time. There's a trick to opening the cell. The only way for a prisoner to leave is for another living soul to take their place. I need to swap places with the Prophet. Don't do this, Lyris. There must be another way. Uh, let's grab one of the other players, for instance. They are not important. They're not me. See anyone else here with a beating heart, do you? If Molag Ball isn't stopped, he'll destroy everyone and everything we've ever loved. The Prophet chose you for a reason. Get him to safety. I'll be fine. I will keep him safe. There are magical locking devices on either side of the cage. You need to deactivate both of them so I can begin the transfer. Once it's done, get moving. The Prophet will know where to go, but he'll need your eyes and your protection. I understand. Good luck. I'll just consider it a giant chastity belt. Then you will be waiting for me to return. Yes, I like this idea. Completed. South Inca opinion. Well, so, alright. No fighting for the pinions, just go and disable them because that's what the quest determines I needs must do. Right, okay. Not the most exciting quest I've ever done. I give myself that the prophet might be you, free! You, I'll take you if you're giving. You're giving yourself to. Oh, oh, sorry, I misunderstood. Oh dear. That's a shaft of light. I have a shaft too, if you know. Oh, never mind. Yeah, there she is. the divines you are safe there is that at least there is sacrificed everything that we might go free her sacrifice must not be in vain can we find a way to take her with us please i'm old i haven't had any inter <clears throat> it's never possible but i promise you once we escape cold harbor we will find a way to rescue her together vestige uh, vestige that is the name i have given you you are but a trace of your former self, a soulless one, an empty vessel that longs to be filled. It is as the scrolls foretold, but not exactly as I imagined. Is that a ginger joke? Seriously, because, you know, whatever. That is what I've come to be called. My true name is lost even to me. Years of torment have taken their toll. Quickly now. We must make haste to the anchor. Anchor? The anchors are Daedric machines of the darkest magic. Their chains bind our world and pull it towards Cold Harbor. I can use one of these anchors to return us to Tamriel, but you must lead me to it. All right. Stay close, then. Hmm. do Run. Sprint, sprint, sprint.
What in the hell? What's happening here? Like... Oh, it's because I'm in third person. <laughs> I'm like, wait, am I in first person? I like, I thought I was in first person, so I turned the camera and this starts happening. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm in... And yeah, okay. Okay, come on. Scroll it in, scroll it in. Come on, can you let me... There it is. to the anchor mooring. Now I have some questions. Answer what I can, but know that time is short. What exactly are the Horodra, uh, Daedra trying to do? The twisted machines of Daedra are used to draw our land of Tamriel closer to Cold Harbor until the two realms merge. It is the evil dream of Molog Bal and his servant Manamako to meld the two realities and make one realm of suffering. How do you know this, Lyris? Lyris and I walked together once. Long ago, we were captured and condemned to this place for becoming entangled in the schemes of Molag Bal, the master of this wretched land. More than that, however, I shall not say. It is not yet time. Goodbye. The insects fight back. How amusing! And yet, so very sad. Oh. Well, aren't you a large guy? Are you compensating for something? Hello! Oh, AoE attack. Oh, he's healing me, apparently. Alright, so there's my charge attack. Keep my distance and I can kind of avoid the uh, waves of souls she's kind of sending my way. wonder if I can jump them. Hold on, let me take a look at my health. And jump. I don't think I took damage from that. Okay, it went right through me even if I didn't jump and it didn't look like it did much damage. So this is pretty much one of those things like it's... I guess it's letting me know about the fact that I can be healed by other people and stuff. Push! I'm gonna push! Push! Push it! Push it real good! I'm just gonna feed him like this. I feel like it. Oh, I have no that uh, right stamina. Hold on, I want to win like that. I'm totally gonna win like that. I'm gonna hide. Trippy, very trippy. Ow! I think you really legitimately cannot die here. I mean, I'm like not taking that much damage. And he's healing me an insane amount, so... Alright, that one hit and actually did damage, so... Does that mean I can jump over stuff like that? No, no you cannot. Okay, now that the hit detection is working... Oh, double tap the... You're right, I forgot about that. Okay, yes, yes, you have a dodge mechanic. Yeah. From one snake to another, let me push that. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I wanted to do that. I don't know why I'm amused by it. But I couldn't die, so, I mean, right? It, it just... Oh. The Dark Anchor's portal is high above us. I will prepare a spell to lift us to it. But first, you must reattune yourself to Nern in order to regain your physical form. To do this, you will need a Sky Shard. A Skyrim, a Sky Shard? A of ethereal magicka that carries the essence of Nern. Some link them to Lorcan, the missing god of creation. If you collect and absorb its power, it should restore your corporeal form. I will summon one of these shards for you to absorb. I am ready. 
Shad of Aetherius, fall upon us now and anoint us with your blessing. There, quickly, collect the Sky Shard. All right, Sky Shards are scattered across the lands of Tamriel. For every three scar sh Sky Shards you collect, your character gains an extra skill point. Hence, the Sky Shard locations can be found in your Achievements Journal. So... All right, yep, here we go. Find all 16 in each area. So there's different Sky Shards in different areas that let you know how many there are if you collect each area. That's interesting, yet at the same time a little bit... I don't know what to think about that. Because this is directly related to your power. Now, hmm, that's not, no, I don't think that's really bad. Because Guild Wars kind of did that. Right? In Guild Wars, every area had uh, a place to get kind of like a skill point or something like that for your character and it powered you up. Of course, uh, in Guild Wars, the discrepancy between power and skill wasn't near as high. Um, compared to other games. So in this game, uh, it's probably the same thing. Skill is probably more <laughs> more important than the actual power, but eh. I mean, the fact that you had to find three of them to get a point is kind of annoying. I kind of like the way that Guild Wars did it in that when you found one, it gave you a point that you could use immediately. So you didn't feel like you were searching hard, uh, you know, far and wide just to get a fraction of power. You were actually getting power. There's treasure chests all over the place. I have to wonder if all of these chests are here so that players can possibly find something that another player didn't search for. That's assuming that that information is accurate. And again, I, don't, I can't say for sure. I haven't seen any patch notes. I haven't really seen how this whole thing works. I'm just gonna kind of hope and see if I can't find something that I can use. No. No, no. 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 No, no. This is kind of overkill with how many things there are to search and possibly get items from. Uh, you know, you mentioned Guild Wars 1. Guild Wars 1 was nice. I liked Guild Wars 1, but I found myself quickly getting bored when I was playing Guild Wars 1. Uh, I, like, had reached my maximum level way before the story was done, and there wasn't really much to unlock, and... I don't know, maybe I just wasn't drawn into the story. I like the fact that you could make your own kind of character type in Guild Wars 1. But I kind of liked Guild Wars 2 in the way they presented it a little more. Uh... The only thing I didn't like about Guild Wars 2 was the fact that you didn't have a tank and you didn't really have healers. You know, so Guild Wars 2 kind of lost me on that. Alright, so what do I need to do? Just talk to him? Yeah, apparently so. It is time. If we are to return to our own realm, we must act quickly. What must I do? First, we must activate the anchor. I can sense a dark energy emanating from two devices on either side of me. Activate both devices. I will begin the ritual that will pry open the jaws of oblivion and allow us to escape. Where will we arrive in Tamriel? There's no way to know for sure. In fact, it's extremely unlikely we will both arrive at the same location. Fear not! I will find you when the time is right. Now go! Activate what? the devices. We will arrive with the sun on Shadowfax or something. Uh, come on, Gandalf, give me something here. Activate the west again with the activating devices on the left and the right, just because. All right, are you teaching me to use objects in the world, or is that what you're trying to do? Normally, quests have a reason. Great Hear my voice, Akatosh. I require your strength. Let the way be opened. Let these wandering souls return home. Let the will of Molog Baal be denied. 
Hurry! We must go now! Ui. Speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. I feared we arrived in different locations. I am in a city of industry where men speak of intrigues and plots beneath layers of innuendo and pleasantry. It matters not. You have awakened once again, and we must set you on your path. Awakened? The voyage between worlds was both chaotic and violent. It deposited us in Tamria, but some distance apart, and quite unceremoniously upon our heads. I lost consciousness myself for a time. What should I do now? For the time being, your journey must continue without me. Venture outside, explore this new place, and learn what you can. Expose the agents of Molok Bar, wherever you find them. Why did his audio just suddenly go down? Why? Why? Okay, that was weird. Uh, when will I see you again? I cannot foresee. But we will meet again. There is still much we need to accomplish. Alright, so I get a signet and a skill point. Level 1, value 6. Add 7 maximum health. Uh, increase maximum health. If I'm healthy, it increases. I guess that's what that means. Remember, the agents of Molog Bar. Yeah, his audio just went way down. Like I can't hear him near as clearly as I could before. You were from the sea by a crew of miscreants and scoundrels, but I sense no true malice in their hearts. It may serve you to aid them and to better understand <coughs> their struggle. They spoke of a leader called Kelly. She appears to be the captain of this vessel. It seems likely that she is either on board or very nearby. When I found a safe haven. I will contact you again. Until then, be safe. Okay. So, alright, so as far as tutorial areas are considered, I mean, I guess... <clears throat> oh, jeez, you're on a ship. I get it. I totally get it. Like, wasn't this how Oblivion started? Was on a ship? Or no, we're, no, wait. Was that Oblivion that you started on a ship? It was one of them. Um... And this is exactly how it goes. I mean, it's kind of a standard thing for this game, uh, game series. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, so Tales, uh, do I think it's been worth the hype it's getting? Uh, you played during a beta weekend, you stated, and that you got bored. Yes, the quiet audio is quite annoying. It was very loud for the majority of that tutorial area, and then all of a sudden it just got quiet. Um, ah, yes, thank you. Morrowind was the one that started on the ship. All right, very good. Um... Uh, you know, I'm kind of amused. I, 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 I can't say that I'm impressed, like super impressed. I'm amused by it. Um, let's just say that right now it's worth the price of admission, which is not me paying anything right now. Uh, but is it something I would pay, you know, pay for? Is it something I would pay a sub for? Eh, not really. I mean, so far it's hasn't really impressed me yet, but... It was stated that this tutorial part is probably one of the worst parts of the game, so we'll get out into the world at large, because that's really what a, what one of these games is about. That's really what Elder Scrolls is about, is getting out, going into the world, and doing your thing. Uh, I also haven't unlocked any skills on my class yet, so I really have no idea how my class is going to perform. I really don't know... I, you know, I can't do anything with my class yet. I do like a few things about the game, though. Uh, the tutorial area was okay. It did some things right. 
normally these tutorial areas are supposed to teach you how to play the game and what mechanics to expect. So let's take Final Fantasy XIV, for example. When you start up Final Fantasy XIV, you're instantly inundated with quests, and each of these quests has a specific mechanic that you're supposed to do, be it talking to people, picking up objects off the ground, or whatever. It's kind of the boring part of Final Fantasy XIV, because there's a crap ton of quests in your starting city and those get you up to like level three or four before you even fight a monster so that's not great it doesn't start you off in the um in the uh in combat or anything like that like this starts you off kind of right away you're trying to run you get a weapon and then you fight a monster and so it kind of drops you into combat fairly quickly before it teaches you other mechanics um so yeah, the, the, the Final Fantasy XIV's beginning part was definitely boring by comparison, but it did a good job of what it was supposed to do, and that was teach you how these mechanics work, how do you interact with the world. And that was what some of this in this tutorial was supposed to do, and it did an okay job about the base mechanics. Um, I mean, having to go to each object and click it on, it had me do that multiple times, but it was just kind of like, okay, whatever. I mean, I learned it the first time. I didn't have to do it two or three times to learn it. Um, rats. Why does it have to be rats? Did I just kill a rat? I totally killed a rat. Yes! Hell yeah! This has officially become the best game ever. Um, yeah, uh... So there's a few things. What I liked about the intro, that intro area was the fact that there were multiple paths that I could take, and I was finding loot. I was finding some decent loot. And as a matter of fact, I mean, even though I picked my weapon at the very beginning, I've got multiple items that I can use. I can use my sword and my shield, or in this case, a mace. I've got a bow. I've got a lightning staff. So I'm able to try out all of the weapons because I found them while I was in that starting area and kind of, you know, pick and choose. I like that. Um... But, is it enough? So far? Mm. Not really. I'm so... This island, Colleen. I should be in Betnik, visiting my people. Nice cleaver. Think, Lamor. How will we get there without a crew? Cat! Alright, this has officially become the worst game ever. Went from best to worst <laughs> in the blink of an eye. Hello. Excuse me. Oh god, I thought you were a chick. What would the look, dude, I'm not trying to, you know, get on you or anything. What's in your store? I wish to sell. Alright, so the sword and the mace are pretty much the exact same thing. Just sell the mace and I'll keep the sword. Uh huh. Yeah, do that. Speak to the captain. She's the one who likes to talk. Oh, I'll do that. Look at that, Lambor. Our half-drowned friend is up and about. We weren't sure you'd make it. You saved me? Really? I just fished you out of the water. Master Kassan got you breathing again. The important thing is you're alive. But if you're feeling grateful, I could use some help. Tell me, did you need to use mouth-to-mouth? -mouth? I'm sorry, did you need help A with job? what? Anyone who helps is going to get rich. Right now, I need a fresh face. Someone this island's butcher in charge, Hedman Bosek, doesn't know and won't stop. Basically, you recruit the folks I need, you get a cut of the take. Interested? All right, I will help you. The three folks I need are Crafty Larissa, Jakarn, and Naramo. Any or all of them would do. Tell me about Jakarn. He's a thief, but he's the best there is. He'd be a big help in the heist I have planned. Problem is, he robbed Bosek. Nobody robs Bosek. 
He's been tossed into the grave under Bosek's palace. How do I get for How do I get There's him? There's an entrance off the river under the palace. Watch out for traps and the other prisoners. They're all murderers down there. The worst scum on the island. That's the grave. You can leave any time you want, if you can get out alive. Who runs Dross Mackay? Bosek, or Hedman Bosek, as he calls himself now. He took over the palace years ago, killed the old ruler and took his place. His thugs, the Bloody Fist, keep order in Port Hunding. You don't want to cross Bosek. Doesn't anyone stand up to him? Captain Helene, but she's worse than Bosek. Her sea drakes run Saint's Port south of here, biggest band of murderers on the sea. Bosek and Helene tolerate each other. Neither's ready for a war, yet. Tell me, where can I get a good strong drink around these parts? The Screaming Mermaid's just up the road, and they've always got good rum. Just keep a grip on your coin purse, or you'll be a beggar by day's end. Anyone I should watch out for? Bosex thugs, the bloody fists. Cross one, you cross them all, and Bosek will have your head on a pike faster than you can say, Please, don't put my head on a pike! Also, the Sea Drakes will gut you if you enter Saint's Port. Where is the rest of your Deserted, crew? the traitors. See, there's a fortune to be made from Breton Galleons. Thing is, King Farharajad called for an end to it now that we're all part of the Daggerfall Covenant. Of course, as a loyal Red Guard, I obeyed. Who is King Farahara Jedajajajad? Ruler of the Red Guard people, now king among equals in the Daggerfall Covenant. King Faharajad would have us raid the ships of our enemies, not our allies. There is wisdom in that. Did your crew uh, disagree? If by disagreed you mean tried to kill us, then yes. Bunch of bloody mutineers. Lambour, myself, and a few others ran them off the ship, but word spread. No one here wants to sail with a captain who won't raid Bretons. Right then. So, good thing about it is there is lots of voice acting. And the voice acting isn't terrible on the ears either. Um, ooh, great. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, that is nice. Uh, that is definitely one thing I disliked about Final Fantasy XIV was just the apparent lack of voice acting. I mean, I, I understand what their point of view on that is the lack of voice acting means they could localize faster and allows them to focus on content because Final Fantasy XIV is being very aggressive on how much content they're putting out. They're going to be releasing like major patches every three months or something like that. Uh, so they're really uh, trying to do you know do that game service. But it, it is jarring when you're sitting there seeing people doing these emotes and... Um, I can just grab a bunch of these bottles, that's kind of cool. You know, and you just don't have the voice acting to go along with it. Um, conversely, of course, if this game doesn't get a lot of content because of the acting, you never know. I mean, it could be. So, you know, it's not like a typical... Elder Scrolls game, I can't pick up everything. I can't pick up plates and throw them around, but, you know, there's some stuff I can pick up. Anyway, so I do like the fact that there's, pl you know, plenty of voice acting to kind of get the mood going. Now, as far as, yeah, it's, it has been mentioned here in the chat that, yeah, looks do matter in the game is not the most graphically impressive. I'm going to be very honest at that one. Um, not too impressed with some of the texture work so far. I mean, I, it, here's the thing. I'm not a big graphics buff. I love good graphics. I love um, a game that can look pretty. But at the same time, I still play like 8-bit games and things like that. So, um, ooh, bread. Thank you. So there's a few things I can take, bread and goblets. Um, so graphics have never been like the thing that I care the most about. But at the same time, you gotta at least make it look passable. I would say the uh, so far. Watch what you track in here. This is Captain Colleen's cabin. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. 
Uh, you work for Captain Colleen. Why else would I be cleaning her cabin? I want it to be perfect when she comes back. Spotless. This whole mutiny was just a temporary setback. I'm sure of it. We'll sail again soon. There was a mutiny. Oh, kind, yes. It was terrifying. Captain Colleen told the crew we were to stop raiding Breton galleons. And that's when it started. The crew went nuts. They tried to take over the ship. Oh, dear. I'm glad to see a pretty thing like you is still doing well, though. It must have been a harrowing experience. But you stopped them. With help from Lambert and Tumasha, I mean. And Master Kassan. They were amazing. So fast and strong. When it was over, Colleen ordered the traitors off the ship, and good riddance. Good riddance indeed. Less competition. Uh, what can you tell me about this ship? Spearhead's the fastest galleon on the seas. Master Kassan gave her to Captain Colleen when he retired. He taught her all she knows about the sea. Once the captain gets a new crew, we'll be off again. What do you think of Captain Colleen? She's amazing. She's smart, tough, and a real fighter. She's incredible with a sword, even for a Red Guard who grow up using them. I've never met anyone like her. How did you meet her? Would well, she be interested in a threesome? Kind of <clears throat> embarrassing, but funny. I was living on the Wayrest docks, picking a few pockets here and there to get by. Then Colleen came walking by with a huge bag of gold swinging from her belt. <laughs> I'm resisting the urge to go super innuendo here. I'm, I'm go I feel like I'm already going overboard with it. <laughs> I did see it. She didn't even notice it was gone until I was halfway down the street. <laughs> but boy, did she get after me. She can run. When she caught me, I thought I was dead, but she offered me a job. She was impressed. And so you became her lover. She said it was a good lift. Taking her purse, I mean. And offered me an apprenticeship. Sailing the seas, drinking and fighting, finding treasure. I love it. Captain Colleen's an incredible mentor. Goodbye. Gosh darn. All right, so I mean, I have to give it this. It is... Um, <laughs> I'm not super impressed by some of the graphics, but uh, at the same time, at least it's not as ugly as Neverwinter was with some of its character models. Uh, Neverwinter did have a decent looking environment going for it, and this game, well, let's just say, let's look at the environment. It's not too shabby. Not too shabby indeed. So, it's not going to win any super high-end graphical awards, and I mean, I, I haven't really changed anything as far as the settings are. I mean, we're, we could very well still be seeing things that aren't fully on yet. I mean, everything is set to high. I mean, obviously, there's ultra high and custom still. So I'm not on the highest settings. Um, let's turn this reflection quality on. Instead of off, let's, let's just put it to a medium. We'll apply. There we go. That looks so much better. Oh my goodness, that looks so much better. Having a little bit of reflection there. That's It's kind of pretty now. That's kind of pretty. So, I have no idea who this person is. Whatever. Be my friend. Be my friend! You got a friend in me! You got a friend in me! Have you seen Captain Colleen? She's supposed to deliver some papers, and I'm getting very impatient. All right, cool your jets, Lando Corissian. All right, so I've got a few things on my radar here, and I don't know what they are. Um... Support hunting. The grave. Okay, so that's the gra That's where I'm supposed to go for this quest, I believe. Um, she only really told me how to get to one of them, though. I need. I. I mean, I want to try and get them all. Alright.
So far, I'm just not. I'm, I mean, I mean we want, if we're going for honesty here, so far I'm not entirely. What's this? Sorry, I got distracted there. Hold on. Dwemer devices are so poorly understood. I've been trying to get this sphere running for weeks. I suspect parts are still missing. Huh, interesting. All right. Um, I mean, it, the game hasn't entirely enamored me yet as far as its combat and things like that. What are you doing? Piss off. Find your own junk pile. Oh, well. Screw you too, lady. I mean, as I mentioned with the kind of the bow and arrow, I mean, it was a uh, little... I didn't quite get it. I mean, the bow and arrow just didn't feel right for some reason. Like, it didn't feel hearty, hefty, or something like that. I, I don't I don't know. Like, there, like, the thunk of the arrow or something, just, there's, I don't know. There was something missing there. It didn't feel quite right. The uh, melee is definitely better than the range so far. Um... And I'm sure the melee will be much better once the collision detection's in. Sky Shard. Yes, impactful is a big thing. Like, when I played Neverwinter, alright, and even played Neverwinter uh, as the Hunter Ranger recently, um, there was a, a, a sense of impact, a sense of weight to everything you did. That was one thing I really gave Neverwinter praise for, despite all the problems that I had with Neverwinter and ultimately stopped playing because of, you know, my disagreement with how they decided to run their kind of their cash shop and all that or the way they do the way they do their business you know um they they did something very right in the combat in that it was very hefty <clears throat> even as a wizard you kind of had to stand there and take aim with your spells like here i can just kind of free run and cast no big deal in uh, neverwinter you kind of have to channel the spell for a brief second and let it loose so you you know there's there's a a sense of force behind it uh, so you knew that when you were what you were about to do was gonna just mess crap up man you were just gonna BAM and that thing was gonna hurt and the animations and that's the other part of it too I think maybe that's why I'm not impressed by the the combat is the animations right because part of combat is also the way enemies respond to what you're doing to them and when I'm sitting there swinging my sword into a monster he didn't quite it didn't feel like they were really reacting to my blade going through them, whereas in Neverwinter they would kind of go, kind of knock back a little bit, and so in an action RPG that's very important. In a game like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, they're not nearly as important because you've got a lot of people that are going to be beating up on a monster anyway, right? So in Final Fantasy, I don't mind so much that my my attacks aren't going to make the enemy recoil, but in Final Fantasy, they still make it feel like your moves are impactful because they use a lot of very, uh, very strong sound effects, for one, and for another, a lot of particle effects, and just it make it look pretty. Uh, in this, I'm not really... I just don't feel like that's a powerful bolt of lightning. Woot. Haha! -ha! Huzzah! Oh, wait, I'm burning now. Good job. Good job, Kage. Good job screwing that up. Alright. So that's that's part of it. It it can't it's not just the gameplay aspect of it, it is how does it feel? Is it visceral? Is it impactful? Is it you know, oh, oh, oh is it me falling into my doom? Uh no, it is not me falling into my doom. Good. Alright, there's like all sorts of ways I can go here, isn't there? Hold on. Okay. I had to do that first. Uh, have I played Blade and Soul? No, I have not played Blade and Soul. Hold on.
Blade and Soul. Why does that sound familiar? I feel like I've heard the name before, but I haven't played it. Oh, hey! To create provisions, select the category you wish to make. Cook or brew in the upper right-hand corner of the provisioning menu. A list of recipes that your character has learned will appear, followed by a list of ingredients needed for the selected recipe. Recipes are found inside of chests, trunks, and desks throughout the world. Ingredients are found in crates, barrels, bags, and other objects in the world. Right-click on recipes in your inventory and select Use to commit them to your recipe book. When you have enough ingredients in your inventory to create your selected recipe, press Not Bound to craft. <laughs> not Bound. Right, so there's supposed to be a letter there. For more information, press Not Bound. Great! So whatever, I've got a button that's not bound. Great, good job. Alright, so cook, no recipes, uh, brew. I've got no recipes. I've got nothing. I don't know how to cook. I'm terrible, apparently. I can't even experiment with it. Corn mash. Do I have anything? Do I have uh, possible recipes? I have my weapons. I kind of want to go back to my sword and board, really. Um, got tons of materials. All right, can I can I get this skill in my staff yet? I can't. All right, that was the whole reason why I did this. I'm going to go ahead and unlock destructive touch. Yeah, I can't even cook ramens, right? Jeez, me with the name of Kagekaze, I can't even cook ramen. You would think that I would understand the principles of that, but no, no, apparently not. I fail at life. I can't be trusted to boil water. <laughs> That's me. That's totally me. Okay, so shock touch once. Uh, deal shock damage and disorient's target. So it, it can disorient, or it can freeze, or it can knock back. Mine's disorient. So we're going to give it a shot. What does it cost? It is magicka. So as of right now, I don't have anything that takes up magicka, because all my abilities are for mouse killing. Sorry, rat killing. Okay, I don't want to go up there yet. Oh dear, I did not actually want to do that. But I lived, so uh, no harm, no foul? No harm, no foul. Hi there! Oh, that guy just peeked around the corner at me. Hey! Stop that! Alright, so we're going to try this ability, then I'm going to go back to Sword and Board. Because it really just feels that much better. It really does. 